What's up guys, Bionic here and welcome to today's Raid Shadow Legends video. Where's the patch? I thought it was going to be today. Uh, so far I've seen some features turned on right on the phone version where you see the icon for the champions that are needed for the fusion. Uh, also I did see you were able to lock the champions when you're within the tavern, which is very convenient. But uh, no, today we're not going to talk about the patch, I guess. We, got, we are instead sorry, going to cover the next top five champions on my list, which is going to be the Provoke champions. So um, I'll quickly mention that the last video was about the True Fear champions. I put Harvest Jack first instead of Mashald. Some people have uh, come to me and said Mashald is better for the following points. Since it is a place debuff, right, so you do not have the chance of a weak hit, it's guaranteed to land, basically, so as long as you have enough accuracy. For that reason, I have to agree that this is a better ability overall if you're looking simply for the true fear, okay? It's also on a two turn compared to Harvest Jack. Problem is, you also risk triggering Torment passives, right? So against Torments, he may not be your top choice. Uh, he does lead into this attack right here, which he can nuke an enemy champion. Compared to Harvest Jack, where it's just a one turn, you have to book him as well to get there, but this you do not have the risk of triggering Torments. So guys, pick your, pick your best champion if you want, but I'll agree to put Mashald first for the time being. That being said, let's get going because we do have a lot of things to cover. There is a lot of Provoke champions. First of all though, what is the Provoke debuff? The champion with this debuff can only attack the champion that applied it for X amount of turns using their default skill. Pretty straightforward. It's still enough to uh, ruin your ability to basically kill the enemy team if they're able to put the provoke on your team first, right? So um, it's not a hard CC in that sense where your champions are not rendered fully incapable of doing something, but it's still enough to, to work really well, which is why some of the best CC champions in the game, in my opinion, are uh, some of the uh, provoked champions, all right? So we're going to use the list like we typically do. I already isolated all the provoked champions. As you can see, there is a lot, and a lot of the provokes are not only just the provoke. Some of the best ones will have a secondary function. For example, Angar here will, will have an AoE provoke with a counterattack self buff, okay? So, um, like I said, some of the best ones, I think, will combine these multiple um, effects together. All right, let's go. So first one on my list of top five Provoke Champions is going to be Umbral Enchantress. That's right, I think that she deserves a spot in the top five for the very simple reason that it's a two turn Provoke, all right? So it's also a 100% chance to land. She is void, so you do not have the risk of a weak hit. That's always good. Once she places this Provoke, she then goes unkillable for two turns but this places a block cooldown skills on her for five turns and this debuff cannot be resisted resisted sorry or blocked and cannot be removed so this is somewhat of a problem right she's like a kind of like a one trick pony she opens up with this you're good but if somebody can remove uh, the unkillable buff on her which is doable with a torment a madame cerise whatever then it's going to remove the provoke off of the other champions all right rendering this basically useless however it's still a great start i've seen her used in high gold tier four uh she is relatively slow but if you can build enough speed on her to be within that 30 percent of your arbiter you're you're good to go all right so i do have one but because i have a champion like Tormin, i decided not to use her anyway for those reasons she is number five on my list the next champion on the list of top five aoe provoke champions is going to be my boy Tormin of the coal that's right the torment uh for obvious reasons right like the skill itself is not a 100 percent chance to provoke however if you go a second time around and there is already a um, basically freeze debuff on the enemies, then it's going to place a block buffs and a 100% heal reduction, which is very nice. If you're also able to work with the combo of freeze and HP burn, then it's going to decrease the cooldown of a random skill. A very, very good skill overall. But 
because it's not a 100% chance, what really makes Tormund shine, obviously being Void as well, is his passive as well as the freeze on his A1, okay? So I think that overall he is a better CC champion. He clearly doesn't have the best provoke though. Uh, also slow, okay? I run him. I try to run him with a stun set as well as being fast doesn't always work all right so i'm not within uh 20 of my hold on i'll show you guys but i'm not within 20 percent of my arbiter and that's a slight problem but still i was able to hit 231 speed with the stun set on a relatively slow champion all right so for those reasons like i said torment the cold number four on the list number three in my opinion is going to be martyr that's right now this champion we know very well not because of her provoke mainly for all the rest of the stuff that she provides such as the aoe 50 percent decrease attack okay which has the provoke on it for one turn which is guaranteed in both cases reduced to a four turn cooldown as well as hitting relatively hard because she is a defense champion um also, she has a 60% increased defense with the counter attack buff on all allies for two turns. One of the very few in the game. Uh, and then on her A1, she also has a 60% decreased defense. Okay, guys, so she's useful everywhere, literally everywhere. So for that reason, she is number three on the list because if you have really nothing else to work with in terms of CC, then you might as well use her. Problem is, if you are using her in the clan boss, she has low speed, you probably built her to be in your clan boss team, so she's uh, speed tuned, right? Now, if you want to use her as a CC champion, then you would want her to be really fast. So you're not going to take her apart just to build her to be fast for the arena, right? You want to use her all around. Therefore, I don't think she would be your priority if you have other good cc champions all right but guys if you don't have anything else you're just starting out like gold tier two three maybe even four definitely use martyr okay moving on to the second champion on my list of top five which i believe should be molly tankard that's right this champion was a fusion last year which i missed and i regret now the provoke itself is only one turn but it is a 100 chance it's also not a hit which means you do not have the chance of a weak hit which means it's basically guaranteed so as long as you have the accuracy check okay also has a 50 percent chance of placing that same provoke for two turns instead and then it places a 30 percent reflect damage buff on this champion for two turns this might trigger the torment but um so as long as she goes first and she's able to do this not necessarily at the end of the world also what's really nice about her she has really really high speed okay makes it a lot easier to gear her to be very speedy right after your arbiter so as long as you're within that 30 percent you're good to go she also has very high resist she also has the uh passive that fills the turn meter of all allies by 15% when she is hit. It's 25% when it's hit by a boss, which makes her very viable in dungeons as well. On top of that, she has a revive an ally with 50% HP, 50% turn meter, and places a block damage buff on them. Very, very good, guys. She's annoying to deal with in the arena, and I see her relatively often in high gold tier 4 and even low platinum all right and then she has her a1 which uh, increases damage by 50 percent if the target is under a hp burn debuff so like i said for those reasons number two on my list all right and now time for the number uno the number one provoke champion it is going to be of course krisk the ageless that's right this guy is a beast he can do so many different things. He can be literally everywhere, even the clan boss. I've seen him there. Um, his provoke is also a place. There's no chance for a weak hit, but you don't really care. He's void anywhere, so there's no chance that is going to happen. Also places a 60% increased defense buff on this champion, then a 30% increased speed buff on all allies except this champion for two turns. This can be reduced to a three turn cooldown. It is crazy. What makes him really good as well is his passive, which adds a shield on all allies equal to 50% of this champion's max HP. And once fully booked, has a 100% chance of placing a 60% decrease defense and a 50% decrease attack debuff on the attacker for one turn when hit. Guys, I 
like this champion is one of the best in the game for those obvious reasons. Also has uh, attack all enemies, a ally protection buff on all allies except this champion for two turns. The continuous will, uh, two continuous heal buff on this champion. Also has AOE A1 with a 30% decrease speed. He's relatively slow, but you know what? At this point, you don't really care. You'll just, you know, make do with what you've got. If you can make him to be fast enough to go second and be your dedicated CC champion, as well as a like decreased defense and decreased attack, problem is you need him to be attacked for this to work. So if, if you're going for a nuke build, then you're only going to have this skill as the opener, right? And then you would still need a decreased defense champion and then your nuker. But in a very tanky team with like a lot of, uh, this guy he has a lot of uh, HP, right? Which he does. And then you can also use a shield set on him, whatever, something like that. He's nearly impossible to kill. It makes your team very, very hard to kill. Anyway, so for those reasons, he is number one on my list of top five provoke champions so it looks like this krisk molly martyr torment the cold and umbral enchantress and to finish it off right before i let you guys go let's do a quick uh few honorable mentions there is a lot guys these are just a few that i picked out that seem to stand out in my opinion we have angar which has the ability to provoke uh, the attacker if he basically already has a uh, provoke on them all right as well as placing a provoke and a self counter attack a very 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 annoying champion to deal with he's the kind of champion that kind of shines just being uh, solo on himself in the arena and a very well geared angar can actually take out an entire team if you have the right amount of accuracy of course all right, next one is, uh, what was it? Coronar, of course, that's another new champion. Very strong as well. Tends to work a little bit better if you have her, uh, his partner, uh, Minaya, 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 I think, but uh, also has a 100% chance provoke. He is void as well. Uh, has a ton of other interesting buffs and debuffs. Basically like this AOE turn meter reduction, which is super annoying. Like I've seen a really good combo uh, of them working together and it's uh, devastating to be honest. Look at his HP as well. Next level, really good champion. Then we also have Rock Breaker. This guy is interesting. I think he's a little bit like uh, Angar where he basically self buffs counter attack that's right place a provoke on everybody but then he has this passive which allows him to build up more defense as he gets hit all right so very good champion i was also very surprised and got taken out by a really good rock breaker once before then we've got soulless my guy soulless my first void champion that i pulled from a shard that i'm not really using to be honest because i already have torment but this guy has a provoke on everybody also has another provoke here which is uh basically another aoe as well but this increases in damage if the enemies have more debuffs on them problem with him super super slow all right so very hard to build enough speed for him to go second in your team but i currently use him in the faction wars and finally let's do this guy right here senecal seneschal that guy, whatever the name, it's a sacred, not sacred order, sorry, Banner Lords, epic defense type champion. He recently got buffed with the perfect veil. Well, the perfect veil got changed basically. 15% continuous heal uh, on one ally, which is interesting, but this is the uh, good one right here. AoE Provoke, uh, which I guess has a 100% chance because it's a place and not a hit, all right? So you have to book it to get the full effect. It requires a lot of books. But 100% chance to provoke with any counter attacks, which has a leech on his A1. So definitely interesting overall. If perhaps this guy would have been buffed earlier on, I think I would have seen him or more of him in the uh, gold arena, basically. Also very fast, so very interesting. If you have nothing else, guys, then definitely consider one of these. Anyway, so guys, that's going to be it for today. The top five provoke champions. As you can see, there's a lot more, even Crimson Helm. I didn't even talk about her, but I find her very interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments below, all right? Keep me in check. Like I just explained in the beginning, I had to switch Harvest Jack and Mashal for the Fear Champions. If there is something I need to change for the Provoke Champions, let me know as well. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you guys later.